Welcome to Design and Move, a weekly functional movement series reviewing common movement impairment syndromes, muscle imbalances, and injury cycles, and how to correct for them. Don't just exercise, but restore optimal movement. Today we're going to address subacromial impingement syndrome. This is an issue involving the shoulder mechanics and the reduction of the space between the shelf of the acromion and the actual humeral head. When there's a decompression of this area, pain and inflammation is normally reduced. So today we're going to show you how to use stretching and activation techniques to restore the natural biomechanics of your shoulder and increase your quality of life. If you want more information on the topic, read our blog in the description below. And if you have questions, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Let's get started. Our first segment is release. We're going to address the pec major and the latissimus dorsi. These are two major muscles that pull the shoulder forward and close off uh, space within the joint at the shoulder. Uh, we're going to use a myofascial release so that we can restore the length tension relationships at the joint. First muscle we're going to target is the pectoralis major. The muscle attaches from the sternum to the arm across the body from medial to lateral. The ball is going to be placed from the sternum. You're going to roll into the belly of the muscle and then exert pressure down onto the ball in a prone position on the ground. Let's get started. All right, so now Ryan has rolled out into the belly of the muscle where he's found a good tension spot. He's abducted his leg on the opposite side. He has a fist in the front of the head to keep the neck at a neutral position. And then he starts out with his arm um, back so that it has a passive tone in the muscle. From this position, after he's waited 30 seconds, He's gonna inhale, he's gonna turn the palm up, reach forward until he finds tension and restriction, and then he's gonna inhale, exhale and bring the arm back. And so now Ryan, while he's moving the arm, he's moving at a pace of two seconds, moving to the top, four seconds moving to the bottom. He's gonna go through roughly six to eight breathing cycles, and then he's gonna switch over to the other arm. The next traditionally overused muscle group that distorts the shoulders forward is the latissimus dorsi. This is the biggest upper body muscle group that attaches our ribs basically to our lower back and uh, pelvis. So it attaches basically here around the mid back, wraps around the rib cage under the, the armpit, and then attaches up at the arm over here, almost hooks around it. You use the muscle to flex the arm and bring it back. So we're gonna apply a soft tissue release technique using a foam roller and get down on the ground to do that. Let's get started. All right, to get in position, first you're gonna start off with the foam roller just underneath the shoulder blades, and it's gonna be offset um, on the side that you're gonna roll onto. Um, from there, you're gonna slightly roll over until you find the first tension spot. You're gonna be set and stagnant in that position on that tension spot, and then you're gonna bring the legs up until you're in the fetal position. Um, creating flexion through the spine, that way that you can anchor the lat um, so that you can gain more tension with it. From here, he's also holding the head so that he can maintain a neutral head position without using the musculature in his neck. From there, he's gonna turn his palm up, inhale and reach above his head till he finds the first restriction. Then he's gonna exhale and bring the arm down. When you're bringing the arm up, you wanna go for about two seconds until you reach that point. Four seconds on the way back. He's gonna go through roughly six to eight breathing cycles. And then from there, he's gonna switch over and get to the other side. Our next segment is activation. The muscle that we're gonna primarily be targeting is the external rotator of the humerus and one of the rotator cuff muscles, the teres minor. Now, when your arms are pulled forward because of the overuse of the pressure of the pectoral and the lat, it pulls the whole shoulder forward and that can pull into the muscles that attach the arm to the scapula, stretching them and weakening, weakening them. So we wanna get that stronger and primarily the rotator, the teres minor, that creates external rotation of the arm. So in order to do that, you're gonna need an exercise band. You need it to be anchored about the height of your forearm at its neutral position or about 90 degrees. And then we would externally rotate the humerus, keeping the shoulder blade retracted and depressed, and then let it come back in towards the midline of the body. Now you'll notice with Ryan, he's not moving the scapula or shoulder joint 
he's moving the humerus inside that shoulder joint and holding his shoulder down. If you notice that you start to compensate by lifting the elbow off the ribs or almost lifting the shoulder up like a delt raise, that's probably too much tension in the band. You're gonna to wanna to step in closer to the wall and reduce the tone. So again, you're gonna to wanna to do about 20 repetitions of these. You wanna make sure that you get through as full of a range of motion as you possibly can without distortion and give yourself about 45 seconds and do two sets. So 45 seconds between the sets and then you would switch to the other side. You're gonna notice that there's gonna be a fairly deep burning along the back side of the shoulder. And again, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but if there is pain present in the front or down the arm or in the back of the arm, deep into the socket, you're gonna to wanna to stop or reduce the range of motion. And then let's get into the next area. Our third segment has to do with integration. This is a word that basically means we're gonna coordinate the movement of multiple joints with the right muscle recruitment patterns in the right synchronization. This is gonna help the brain to remember how to do the pattern correctly so that the path of motion for the joint is protected and the anatomic position is in, in alignment or in neutral. So what we're gonna to do today is work on the scapular retraction and depression while gliding the arm back behind the body as it would represent itself in gait or while you're walking. So if I were to step forward on my left leg, my left arm would come around the rib cage as I would go through my gait cycle. So we're gonna emulate that same movement today as Ryan takes a step back onto his right leg. He's gonna brace his pelvis, glide the arm around the rib cage, the scapulothoracic glide, keeping the shoulder depressed and retracted, and then externally rotate the palm open. So this is working through the external rotators that we targeted in the activation. It's gonna to help to reduce and stretch through the pec major muscle group. And again, he's gonna glide the shoulder around and engage the muscles that stabilize the shoulder to the spine, all the while working the muscles that hold the shoulder or the humerus in the joint. So he's going to do two sets of 20 repetitions, just like the activation. It's going to take about 45 seconds between the sets. And then he would move to the other side of the body, do both sides. And then that would wrap our integration while we move right into strength. Our last segment is our strength segment. Strength in a corrective sense has to do with the increase of the tone and the passive relationship of a muscle. Remember that a muscle has two types of tensions. It has a dynamic tension, basically how much can it lift from the ground, and then it has a passive tone, and this is the relative stiffness of the muscle when it's not engaged. The relative stiffness of a muscle increases when you build the muscle or make it bigger. It has a more supportive capacity to hold the orientation of the joint or bone that it's attached to. So in this case, we're gonna work the muscles between the scapula. These are the rhomboids, lower mid trapezius, and the external rotators, once again, of the arm attaching to the scapula. So Ryan's gonna do this, and hopefully you'll do the same by laying in a fixed position on the ground. He's in a prone position. He's neutral, so his legs are just inside of his hip line. Back is nice and neutral. He's not arched or excessively flexed. His chin is tucked and his head is in line with his spine. And with his arms retracted, he's gonna to start to lift the arms up overhead until he feels his upper traps start to engage and he starts to shrug or wanna feel those shoulders roll in fearly towards the, the floor, or in this case, the table that he's on. So he's gonna breathe out as he lifts up, breathe in as he comes down, and he's doing a nice, slow, controlled movement for each of the repetitions. All said and done, again, he's gonna do 20 repetitions two sets, 45 seconds to a minute of recovery in between, and he would go again until he would feel that momentary fatigue. So Ryan, you can go ahead and stop. When you guys are doing this, just remember, if you lift the arms up and the shoulders start to dump forward, or the neck starts to crane up into extension, or you notice that your arms start to rotate internally, these are all signs that your muscles are now fatigued, and you're gonna to start to recruit muscles that you don't want to, which is gonna alter the range of motion and actually create a susceptibility towards a misalignment, which actually gonna reinforce negative things. So be careful of that and make sure that you only move to the point of breaking form, not to the point of forcing the position so that you get the intensity out of the body. You'll still get the hypertrophic effect and the relative stiffness if you stay in that range of motion and then stop when your body tells you. Add up the volume over time, and if you notice that you get stronger, you can start doing multiple sessions through the week and pretty soon you'll see again a decompression of that acromial space, reduction in pain, and an increase in the biomechanics and functional range of motion.
Remember, this is one of many videos and clinics on movement distortions, muscle imbalances, and injury cycles. So feel free to look into the archive and the other areas and follow along with us week to week as we provide a new blog and video tutorial on the series. So check it out. Again, if you have questions, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. And as always, your body's designed to move, so stay in motion. We'll see you next week.